In this test tube test, I wanted to observe the amount of hydrogen liberated in a reaction using this 16 gram bar of aluminum. This is probably not pure aluminum. I don't know what this is made out of. I'd imagine it's some kind of magnesium alloy, but we're gonna react it in this flask, which contains 30 grams of sodium hydroxide and 92 grams of water. Run for almost a half hour. Still just not hot enough to really be going at it. I'm gonna do something really stupid and I'm gonna light the flare. Oh shit. And that is why you never light the flare. Okay, so after that little explosion and we lost half of the solution, I decided to just go ahead and add some water to what was left over and come to find out it's actually reacting a little bit more violently than 45 minutes into it here the reaction is really taken off 129 degrees I'm going to again light the flare but I have added a high velocity nozzle this time however it still may explode again okay it's not killing me this time which is awesome that was incredibly frightening lighting that up so now that the flare is lit I can uh, monitor it a lot safer we're gonna go ahead and restart the clock now that we have the flare lit I'm kind of worried about the reaction it's getting really hot okay that's not a good thing I'm at 138 degrees here and climbing So I might have to get the spray bottle going on this bad boy and kind of cool that off as we go. But uh, the flare is lit. Move this stuff out of our view. And that's where we are right now. This entire reaction is about ready to go thermal nuclear on me. You can see it is really bubbling now. This setup might be leaking quite a bit of gas on me too. I need to glue that down. Okay, as you can see, it's really starting to go kind of nuts on me here. Wow, that is a lot of gas production. Just hoping it just doesn't get too hot. I'm gonna have to start spray cooling this down. It's about ready to start guising on me, it looks like. I'm in a bit of trouble here. I need to stop right now. And as suspected, the reaction just went thermonuclear on me. I had to hurry up and throw it down on the ground. I can't even touch it. So I had about 48 minutes into it. It just went completely nuts. And it still is. Look at that. Now watch what's getting ready to happen here. The hydrogen production at this point is pretty brutal. As soon as them bubbles hit that neck, they just go crazy and shoot out of that thing like a geyser. That is a lot of hydrogen gas I'm releasing into here. There's hardly any electrolyte in there. <laughs> well, that cooled it down. That was a near miss incident there. I definitely need to rethink this. So right around 170 degrees or whatever that was saying, 107. Things just took off. Well, fellas, 
Got a little bit of a toxic mess here going on. I've nearly blown my face off with caustic soda and explosive hydrogen gas. And the reaction runs away with the amount of reactants that I've used. So we're not going to get any good data out of that. I think I'm going to call it a night and just kind of post this footage. Let you guys see what I got going on right now. I am thinking that this compression vessel could be dangerous if I don't do this right. Now we observe that massive explosion. Well, when we start this out, we're going to have a column of fresh air in here about this big. So I'm going to possibly figure out a way to maybe fill this thing all the way up with electrolyte or at least up to here, then cap it, let it pressure up a little bit, then tap the bottom valve and drain some of the electrolyte back out or the caustic solution. I keep calling it electrolyte. It's not an electrolyte. It's a caustic solution. And uh, thinking, yeah, if I drain that to about right there, once the pressure is built up, that will alleviate some of the air contamination issues. I also have a vacuum pump that I could put a vacuum on that remaining little small amount, but I'm not going to get all crazy like that. I'm just going to avoid igniting anything and I'm going to purge it. I'm going to let the gas vent for a while until the reaction gets going good. I'm not sure what I'm going to do about runaway reaction. As I said, this, uh, this particular reaction is very prone to runaway. I don't know how much of the footage I got. I had to put the camera down before I started losing eyeballs and hands. This stuff will literally boil your hand right off. So, not good to get boiling caustic solution that's a 50-50 mix on your hand. I think I got some all over the table, I can't remember. But anyway, I'm going to clean this up, post this footage, and um, I'm going to try it again tomorrow to get an accurate reading. I think we are like 50 minutes or something. Now, it doesn't take that long if you start off with a warm solution. That's the main thing, is that the, the solution has to be warm for it to be activated. So, under no circumstances should you try this. This is stupid dangerous. Not only is the caustic soda capable of blinding you and causing extremely disconfiguring wounds, but the hydrogen gas buildup could blow up your entire house. So do not mess with this. This is a very dangerous situation. And you've seen how igniting this flare caused that extremely loud explosion. The camera couldn't possibly capture how loud that really was, but it sounded like oxyhydrogen. So there you have it. I'm going to set up another test. I'm going to use just the six grams of pure aluminum this time and i'm going to use a far lighter mix i'm going to go with possibly half of the caustic solution i used that time because that was just getting too hot and too violent 